Can I have your attention for five minutes? I want to share my life story before I die. Before I die. Before I die. Since my grandfather, Othman, passed away, I've lived in the amazing house he left me. I lived in it happily for years, me and my children. But one day, a man called Jacob knocked at my door. He said, there is this weird guy with a mustache who's running after me, trying to kill me. Can you please help me out? I said, of course, come in. You are welcome to stay at my house as much as you want. I will prepare the guest room for you. Jacob lived in my guest room for a while, but he started to bring his family and friends to my guest room, uninvited. They kept coming and coming until the guest room was not enough for them anymore. They were a lot. Meanwhile, I'm thinking, this is not what guests should do. Where are your manners? Then suddenly, Jacob and his friends and his family pushed me and my children away from my own house. He told me, you can live in the small dog house in the garden, but the rest of the house will be for us. I said, what? What are you doing? Are you stealing my house? He looked me in the eyes and said, if I don't steal it, someone else is gonna steal it. I was shocked. You are stealing my house. And if I don't steal it, someone else is gonna steal it. And if I don't steal it, someone else is gonna steal it. And if I don't steal it, someone else is gonna steal it. No, no one, no one uh, uh, is allowed to steal it, Yami. He told me that in his religion, his God or whatever promised him my house and asked him to steal it from me. I told him, I don't care what your God is telling you. I don't even believe that this God is real. You can believe in whatever you want just away from me. Stop stealing my house. I called the police to help me. When they came, it was my second shock. Instead of taking this thief to jail, they said, Jacob has the right to defend himself. I said, defend himself against who? He stole my house. He is on my property. He put me and my children in the doghouse in the garden. Israel has a right to defend itself. Right, right to defend itself. The police said you might get angry and attack him from the doghouse, trying to get your full house back. We will not let that happen. They even gave him weapons to make sure that he would be stronger than me. I was left speechless. Is that the police? Isn't there one gram of justice in their hearts? So I immediately started shouting out to the people. Look at the police. Look at the justice system. Look at what is happening in front of your own eyes. But people didn't care. And this was my third shock. Turns out, the police have installed this hypnosis device in every house, all over the street. Using this device, they can control what people think and do very easily. This device keeps telling them, every day, maybe every hour, that Jacob is a very nice guy and I am a tea man. What is this new nickname they gave me, a tea man, and why? After a while, I understood that everyone who is under the influence of this hypnosis device will never open their eyes to see this heist, and none of them will ever help me. So I screamed to my own brothers, my brothers with whom I share everything. We have the same father, we have the same manners, we have the same culture, we have the same faith, we have the same beliefs, and we have the same God. I knew that these are the only people on earth who will always see with open eyes the difference between truth and lies. And this was my fourth and final shock. I found some of them sitting there enjoying their time in front of the same hypnosis device. I found some of them became so fat, all they cared about was their stomachs. And they were even accusing me that I sold my own house. I found some of them drowning in debt to the same oppressive police system and that police system is controlling them using this debt. 
I found some of them fighting against each other. Imagine brothers fighting against each other. I found some of them getting destroyed, murdered, humiliated by the same police system I was seeking help from. Some of them even started to be friends with Jacob. Jacob, the man who stole my house. They are befriending him. My own brothers normalized with Jacob. Imagine. This is when I finally understood. I am all alone in this world. No one will ever help me. Not the police, nor the hypnotized people, not even my own brothers. I looked my brothers in the eyes and I told them, أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون Do people think once they claim that they are believers they will be left without being put to the test? ولقد فتن الذين من قبلهم فلا يعلمن الله الذين صدقوا ولا يعلمن الكاذبين We certainly tested those before them In this way Allah will clearly distinguish between those who are truthful and those who are liars Meanwhile, Jacob and his friends were creeping inside my house. They are even expanding their share of the house, taking away from me part of the small dog house they left for me and my children. And the straw that broke the camel's back was when Jacob decided to enter my house prayer room. <laughs> I told him, this prayer room is more important than the whole house. It's more important to me than the whole world. It's more important to me than my own life. So I decided I would take matters into my own hands. I don't care that Jacob and his friends are much more powerful than us. I don't care if they have weapons and we don't. I don't care if they have support of the police and all the hypnotized people. I don't care that in this fight, we will lose 100 from us for them to lose one. I don't care if we fight tanks with rocks. I don't care that they had electricity, money, medical system, food and drink technology while we are literally living in the dark like cavemen. Because the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, Allahu a'la wa ajal, la sawa. قَتْلَانَا فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَقَتْلَاكُمْ فِي النَّارِ Whoever dies from our side is in paradise. Whoever dies from their side is in hellfire. We have been in this unfair fight for years now. And we will not stop until we either take our house back or cease to exist. Or cease to exist. Or cease to exist. I'm just recording our story for history. This might be the last time you ever see me or hear my voice. Show these videos to your children, so when they grow up, they will know that their own father ignored us and left us to die. And how the whole world didn't care. See you in the hereafter, in front of the balance. We will have our real discussion there. I will ask Allah for justice from all the people who made friends with Jacob. Because Allah said, إنما ينهاكم الله عن الذين قاتلوكم في الدين وأخرجوكم من دياركم وظاهروا على إخراجكم أن تولوهم ومن يتولهم فأولئك هم الظالمون Allah only forbids you from befriending those who have fought you, driven you out of your homes or supported others in doing so. And whoever takes them as friends, those are the true wrongdoers. I will ask Allah for justice from those who didn't care and let us die. Because Allah said, وَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالْمُسْتَضْعَفِينَ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ وَالنِّسَاءِ وَالْوِلْدَانِ الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ قَرْيَةِ الظَّالِمِ أَهْلُهَا وَاجْعَلْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّا وَاجْعَلْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ نَصِيرًا What is the matter with you that you fight not in the cause of Allah? 
and for the oppressed among the men, women, and children who say, Our Lord, take us out of this city of oppressive people and appoint for us from yourself a protector and appoint for us from yourself a helper. What's life like inside the world's biggest prison? To find out, you don't have to commit any crime. You just have to be born in Gaza. The only power plant was bombed. Travel was banned. Most imports and exports were blocked, forcing most of Gaza's factories to shut down. Fishermen couldn't fish beyond a very limited area. Supplies of fuel and electricity were reduced so much that people converted their cars to run on cooking oil. Even medical supplies were restricted. The Israeli government decided how much food would be let in by calculating how many calories everyone in Gaza would get. As a government advisor at the time said, the idea is to put the Palestinians on a diet, but not make them die of hunger. Things got even worse. There have been several major military assaults by Israel on Gaza. Israel says the goal of these assaults is to limit Hamas's ability to fight. Thousands of civilians have been killed, and tens of thousands of homes destroyed in these assaults. Israeli officials call it mowing the lawn. But even when the assaults stop, supplies to rebuild are often prevented by Israel from entering the territory. About half of Gaza's population are children, meaning they've only ever known life under this blockade. They've never known a full day with electricity. They know when the bombing starts, there is nowhere for them to flee. They know that when they get older, they're probably not going to find work. I'm always sick. I'm always, I don't know. I can't do anything. You know, all of this. What, what do you expect me to do? Fix it? I can't even do anything in this war. I just want to be a doctor or anything to help my people, my cat. I'm just a kid saying to myself, why do we deserve this? Why, what did we do to this? My family said they just, they, they just hate us. They just don't like us because we are Muslims. Why does Muslims act for you like that? We're just kids. We're just... You see all of the kids around me? They're just kids. Why wouldn't you just send a missile to them and kill them? It's not fair. Do you know what is really funny? My neighbor, this guy with blue eyes at the end of the street. His house was also stolen. What happened to me yesterday is exactly what is happening to him today. The only difference between me and him is our eye color. But in reality, dealing with his situation, the oppressive police decided somehow that stealing someone's house is wrong. They used the same hypnosis device that was calling me a T-man yesterday to call him a victim today. Even though we are in the same exact situation, the police and all the hypnotized people suddenly started defending and supporting my blue-eyed neighbor, sending him weapons, sending him money. One of his children sacrificed himself defending his own house against the thieves. They called him a hero. While when one of my children did it, they called him a T-man. Subhanallah. It's really emotional for me because I see European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed. People with blue eyes and blonde hair. That is why the so-called expert on the BBC is emotional. Not because the people are homeless, not because their country is being invaded, but because their hair is blonde. These are not refugees from Syria. These are Christians, they're white, they're, um, they're very similar. Very similar to us. How so? Because the Syrian refugees are Muslims. Their skin is darker, their hair is not blonde. So Europe does not want them. And remember, this is not being said at some white supremacy cult. This is happening on live television. You know, like Iraq or Afghanistan, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European uh, city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. So Iraq and Afghanistan are uncivilized countries. Their people are uncultured. Their regimes are irresponsible. So they deserve war. They deserve hundreds of bombs and years of occupation. What about Ukraine? According to CBS, no. Ukraine does not deserve war or hardships because Ukraine is civilized. 
Our question is, why just Ukraine? Ukraine is not a member of the European Union. It is not part of NATO. So what explains this level of assistance? Let me show you what Bulgaria's Prime Minister said about refugees. I'm quoting. These people are intelligent. They are educated people. This is not the refugee wave we have been used to. People we are not sure about. We were not sure about their identity. People with unclear pasts who could have been even terrorists. That was a European head of state. He is openly calling West Asian refugees terrorists. If this does not expose Western hypocrisy, nothing does. I decided that there is no hope in this generation. As long as they have double standards and judging with their own desires. I decided that there is no hope in my own brothers as long as they are deluded, loving their dunya life more than the hereafter. All I can tell them is what Allah said. Say, O Prophet, if your parents and children and siblings and spouses and extended family and the wealth you have acquired and the trade you fear will decline and the homes you cherish, if all of these are more beloved to you than Allah and his messenger and struggling in his way, then wait until Allah brings about his will. Allah does not guide the rebellious people. My last wish before I die is for people to know my story. Grant this final wish for me. Make sure you share it with your friends because they will never hear my story in the media controlled by the oppressive police. Salam إذ يقول لصاحبه لا تحزن لا تحزن إن الله معنا فأنزل الله سكينته عليه وأيده وأيده بجنود لم تروها وجعل كلمة الذين كفروا السفلى وكلمة الله هي العليا والله عزيز حكيم انفروا خفافا وثقالا وجاهدوا بأموالكم وأنفسكم وَجَاهِدُوا بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ